Hi, this is Stephanie Miller from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from my show on Political Voices Network. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and all these folks engaged in wildly uh, propagandistic rhetoric. Or uh, Moscow Marge, as Ken Buckley. Oh, yes, as he wow. refers to her. Wow. I wonder if she gets together with Moscow Mitch. Yeah. And they have <laughs> Moscow mules. Okay. That we're be fun. Huh? Yeah, right? We are. Tr- What's in a Moscow mule? I don't drink hard liquor. I don't. I've never had a I Moscow mule. I think vodka's in no it. Oh. I think there's vodka. So people are screaming at their, at their screen right now. I can tell. I've never had a Moscow mule. Me neither. I, as, as I mentioned, I don't drink hard liquor, so I don't know what's in that. It strikes vodka. me as an old manny kind of drink. No, I'll, I'll, no. I'll get the recipe. Oh, I know you. who would know. Close <laughs> enough. Hi. Hi. We were wondering if you've ever had a Moscow Mule with Moscow with um, you know Moscow Mitch or Moscow Marge. <laughs> Moscow Mitch, Moscow Marge, Moscow. Uh, what was it Mike Johnson? Uh-huh. Yes. I mean, we've, got, we've got all these guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. A Moscow mule is uh, one part Mitch, one part Marge, and two <laughs> parts Mike. And that's how you get a Moscow mule. Woo-hoo! They'll carry anybody's water. <laughs> there you go. Not a buddy. Oh, by the way, when, you, when did you start uh, entering passcodes for these? Uh, for it's this brand Zoom? new. Oh. Today. It's, it's, oh. We have a special guest Zoom coming on today. To do, yeah. The Zoom decided to do an update. <laughs> yes, yeah. unless you were in Wilson Phillips, you can't get in today. Okay, so <laughs> just kidding. Carney Wilson's coming up. Yeah. So, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I mean, this is who is it? You know, uh, Mike Turner said it as well. But Ken Buck has said you're at the point, Mar- you know, Malcolm, where you have at least semi-normal Republicans calling them out for doing Putin's talking points on on the House of, uh, of Cong in the House of Congress. I mean, go ahead. Talk just talk about that a little bit because oh. it. Yeah, go ahead. Well, what you call semi number semi normal Republicans is what we call people who are about to be kicked out of the Republican Party and will thank you come as independents and join as or de- as Democrats, mm-hmm. also yeah. known as sane people. Right. So, you know, this is absolutely amazing. It's 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 what you, I, and everyone have been saying since 2016 that Russia owns the Republican Party. Yeah. They own Donald Trump. If you support Donald Trump, you must own. You must align yourself with Moscow's wishes because Vladimir Putin, you know, has him by a you know a leash and collar that he regularly walks him around. Yeah. And so that's why you get people like Marjorie Taylor Greene and you know Mike Johnson and and all the rest doing Moscow's bidding, literally owned by Moscow. I mean, and. Malcolm, you know, your first, you know, or not first book, but, you know, The Plot to Hack America, I I, I, I keep saying this, this is like the biggest, dumbest plot ever now. Like, there's not, you know, Bobby Kennedy Jr. literally did Putin's talking points word for word the other day about Ukraine. I mean, and then his campaign aide comes right out and says, this is to get Trump in. (laughs) Like, nothing is hidden anymore, right? No, it doesn't have to be hidden because you have one third of the electorate is completely sodden with whatever insane tribalisms Trump puts out. And they will do for, you know, like like the guys with the T-shirts, of which I actually have one of those T-shirts now. I'd rather be a Russian than a Democrat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which means they would rather choose an enemy of the United States over being an American that has a different political ideology now. Yeah. This is where we stand into danger. This is be- not just that it's, you know, six or seven years of us or eight years shouting our heads off about how dangerous the co-option of the American political system has become. It's just that they don't care anymore. They yeah. will tell you to your face they work for the Russians. Yeah. They will tell they will do their bidding. RFK Jr., who is, let's just be honest, is a nut. Yes. OK. <laughs> and his <laughs> billionaire mistress who was, I think, a girlfriend of Elon Musk. Yes. Uh, which should tell you a lot. Elon Musk spending $44 billion to take over Twitter to turn that into a pro-Moscow machine yeah. tells you that money sides with money. And that money is the Russian oil oligarchy money, and they respect murder and power. And if they have to wipe out a country in Europe, to do that, to get that, if they have to destroy American democracy, which is precisely what's happening, yeah. right? I saw this morning on MSNBC, did you, did you guys talk about the focus group on undecideds, mm-hmm. people who voted for Biden? 
uh, nine out of, or, or sorry, eight out of nine of them were literally speaking Trump talking points mm. and thought that Trump's economy was uh. better than the current one. Uh. It's crazy. Yeah. But crazy is rule of the day now. I mean, and it would be different, Malcolm, if it was a little bit of a thing in the opinion area. We're 3.8 unemployment. We were almost 15 percent. It's not like it's a little dispute over a little a little margin. I mean, you're you're absolutely right. It, it just the fact that they're even trying the "Are you better off than you were four years ago?" is insane. But yeah, go ahead. No, it's insane. It's literally has to be insane because by every metric, remember when Trump was bragging about the stock market breaking? I think it was twenty thousand or something along that line. Yeah, it's a thirty-eight thousand points now yeah one of these idiots was out here complaining about his 401k the 401k crashed under trump but they don't care and of course you know that was not the the muslim guy undecided ready to vote ready to not vote for biden or to vote for trump and and talk that when trump is talking about the greatest mass deportation in the history of the united states yeah we'll start on day one yeah what is wrong with people and, exactly and malcolm talk about the world stage as you do a mm. little bit because you know you've got this oh he's conducted trump's conducting a shadow presidency he's talking to you know mbs and jared's talking to netanyahu and you know trump's saying yeah. oh this would october 7th wouldn't have happened if i was president are you kidding me like do we don't know that putin was training and f- funding hamas like that this is as i always say malcolm all one story i mean yeah it it, the the unified field theory (laughs) is 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 clearly at work here russia assists trump netanyahu to stay out of jail is assisting trump yeah anything anyone calling for them to moderate themselves either side in this story quietly leans over and goes to trump the saudis want unbridled unbridled uh, uh, authority to do whatever they want, which is why they gave Elon Musk $20 billion of the $44 billion to stop global critics yeah. so that they can kill them with impunity if they want to. Now they're buying tennis. They bought tennis. They did what we call oligarchy by sports, right? Yeah. Reputation laundering yeah. by sports. Bought golf, now have bought tennis, trying to buy the right. Grand Prix circuit. And they bought Jared Kushner and Donald Trump. Right. Uh, same thing with, you know. Yeah. And this is how they get money to Trump is through his golf. So they don't have to go through campaign finance. Yeah. They give him tournaments where the cash goes straight to him. Yeah. Right? Um, Malcolm, uh, you wrote a very yeah. disturbing piece called Warning Are Israel and Iran Going to War? Um, <laughs> and what you hell? said, are we in what America else? and the West ready for this? I mean, this just, uh, okay, Go just talk a little bit about, because, you know, I, what was the piece, Jody? Oh, God, it was a great piece. You would have loved it, Malcolm, about um, just Netanyahu. And his, he is just, yeah, the degree to which he's trying to undermine Biden and get, you know, Trump back in office. Um, talk a little bit about this whole situation right Look, now. I'm going to tell you guys just straight up. If Donald Trump wins this election, And you think that you support the people of Palestine. For those of you who get on Twitter and go, Malcolm Nance and Stephanie Miller hate the Palestinian people. They're talking about ethnically cleansing 2.2 million people. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was talk early on about making them walk into Egypt or across to Jordan. Donald Trump would endorse it. He would back it and put the full force of the United States behind ethnically cleansing these areas. And Benjamin Netanyahu would be the prime minister to sell it, even though most Israeli people do not support Netanyahu. I don't support Netanyahu. No one in their right mind does. So right now he's in that driver's seat and he needs Trump's authoritarian, dictatorial style to walk over all critics. So when he's also talking about getting rid of American citizens who protest against uh, the United States or protest against Israel. Look, things can get much worse. The article that I wrote in Substack, listen, if you are not following me, you're getting two or three minutes of work on me out of Twitter. All of my deep writing now is on Substack. And this article about is Israel and and, uh, Iran going to war, that could be happening in a matter of days. What is like what we call the war of the cities. 
in the Iran-Iraq war, where two nation states start throwing ballistic missiles into each other's capital, the way Russia is doing at Ukraine. Yeah. This could happen between Israel and Iran. And you want you think that the price of oil is bad for you uh-huh. right now. Yeah. I mean, I, we're in a place gas where prices are bad right now. You're Wait right. till it goes up to three hundred dollars a barrel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that that's exactly what they want. Anything that hurts Biden, you know, anything that hurts America hurts Biden, and they're all for it. They're all for all of America's enemies. It's extraordinary. I mean, President Biden blasted Netanyahu's mistaken Gaza policies, called for a six to eight week pause in the war. He spoke of his anger over the IDF strike that killed the world kitchen workers. Of course, he said. So what I'm calling for is for the Israelis to call for a ceasefire or allow for the next six to eight weeks total access to all food and medicine going into the country. I've spoken from everyone from the Saudis to the Jordanians to the Egyptians. They're prepared to move in, are prepared to move this food in. I think there's no excuse to not provide for the medical and food needs of these people. That should be done now. I mean, we're obviously at the point where, you know, Netanyahu's turning the entire world against Israel. He's he's turning, uh, obviously, we're at a point now where people are urging him to condition aid. Uh, I, I just don't, we keep asking the question, Malcolm, but in a democracy, what do we do about Netanyahu? Because it seems like you're right. He and Trump are both in power or running to stay out of jail. <laughs> They're the, both the same crook. Well, let me tell you what's going on in Israel and what was going on in Israel when I was there. This is really about that man. It's really about him as an individual. The Israeli government is a coalition government. The people who could actually run it responsibly are, are not the people who, have, have, who control all of the levers of power. So long as he is prime minister and he has the support of the right-wing extremists in that government, the other 80% of the Israeli people yeah. who want to see defense, they want to see themselves taken care of, you know, uh, they are having protests against him nightly. When I was there, they actually used the police against the families of hostages who disagreed with Netanyahu. But look, President Biden is calling for a ceasefire, not Hamas's ceasefire, a humanitarian pause to get food in there. Hamas wants the war to end. The war's not going to end on Hamas's terms. This is not the permanent ceasefire people I, are calling for. Malcolm, I'm sorry, I didn't realize we're running late here because we with the technical oh. stuff. Can I just ask a quick technical question? Because, we, first of all, I, I agree we need an independent investigation of the World Kitchen Worker thing. Mm-hmm. What do you think happened there? Because I don't, I mean, the whole that the drones couldn't see the World Kitchen things at night, is that well, plausible yeah, to I'm you? Yeah, I'm going to tell you something about that. I didn't know quite a bit uh, about uh, the World Kitchen strike until I got a lot more detail out of the Israeli report. You cannot tell logos on vehicles at night unless they are infrared. When I was in Iraq and I ran security for Save the Children, we put infrared flashing strobes so U.S. Army v- aircraft yeah. and Air Force aircraft could identify us. But they had These been in coordination. How, how did the coordination, coordination break down? They had coordinated with IDF, their They're, movements. Because the drone pilots are not in Gaza. The drone pilots are in central Israel. And their deconfliction uh, parameters were these vehicles will be moving X. I'm going to tell you something that I will criticize World Food Kitchen about. Why the hell were you moving at night? In my entire 10 years in Iraq, we never, ever, ever moved at night. It's a death sentence when the U.S. armed forces are out at night. They should have just paused it. I don't know anything about these guys who are gunmen or whether it was their British contract security who had weapons. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Israel needs to tighten up what they're doing, yeah. and there does need to be an independent investigation. Yes. Of yeah, I'll I don't. Do I don't trust I'll anything IDF in. or Hamas says.